McLaren Artura. We've watched Daniel Ricciardo drifted and Emma Gilmore ragged on the track, but the closest I've come was the passenger seat. Now finally I get to drive it on the road. They say good things take time, let's find out. Waiting for this car has been like, well, waiting for Top Gun Maverick, you know, delayed by a couple of years. You know it's going to be a blockbuster, but until you take your seat, or, well, the wheel in this case, you're never quite sure how good the show's going to be. Where do you start? Well, let's go with the name Artura. It's not the usual way McLaren do things. But then again, this is not your usual McLaren. At first glance, the looks are subtle and even familiar uh, to an extent, but look closer, those flying buttresses, updated nose. Artura is the newest McLaren in years, because under the skin, this is barely related. Until now, it's pretty much been accepted that every McLaren had a 4-litre V8 with turbocharging. Just changes to the internals decided whether it was incredibly powerful or ridiculously powerful. But not the Artura. Behind me, <laughs> then just heat out the top of that awesome chimney stack, is a 3-litre V6. Although on paper, you wouldn't really spot the difference. There's 671 horsepower pushing this car along. Uh, there is one difference. 90 of those horsepowers come from an electric motor. And that e-motor also contributes to 720 newton meters. That V6 is also less of a V than a valley, 120 degree angle. That allows the turbos and all the guff to sit comfortably in that wide V. There's eight forward gears, but no reverse. That's done via the e-motor. As for the Ford gears, how does 0 to 100 in 3 seconds flat sound? It is fast, on to 330 kilometres an hour. That's in a plug-in hybrid. You know, like one of those beside us. That's something else. No wonder I've likened this before to being a baby P1. But where the P1 was something of a one-off, this Artura signals the future of McLaren road cars. And that road car thing is important because the Artura we know is quick on a track, but that's not where it will spend most of its time. This becomes a genuine zero emissions vehicle. We're all electric now. 31 kilometres of range thanks to that 7.4 kilowatt hour battery. But the best bit is, I flick this button again, Put it into an angrier mode and it's off like a rocket and you see the real magic of that e-motor because what it's doing now is filling all the gaps in any turbo lag and gear shifts it's just unrelenting surge unrelenting and totally addictive but it's also a very green surge, 104 grams per kilometre of carbon dioxide. That's a, a low emissions vehicle. The official fuel consumption, 4.6 litres per 100 kilometres. In old money, that's 61 miles per gallon. The new carbon tub, which weighs just 82 kilos, is combined with a new chassis setup featuring an all-new multi-link rear suspension. It's more stable under heavy braking, but note there's no regen braking. McLaren have tried to keep that part of the car pure. You know, for all the new school tech, this car is very honest and old school. Nothing is synthesized, I suppose, is the, the best word to use. The steering is electro-hydraulic, so you feel everything through those front wheels. Then there's the sound. It's not, it's not sonorous. It's not about making a certain noise. It's about doing a job, and by golly, it does a job. Ah, but don't be mistaken, this car can still show off. There's an e-diff which balances the torque across those rear wheels, and if the mood and conditions suit, it offers great control when drifting, like Danny Rick showed us. Mate, the way the e-motor comes in, ooh, <laughs> how could you get bored of this? Coming in hot.
The new interior design features a revamped infotainment system complete with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You see, that's the thing. The more you look, the more you see that this is the new McLaren. And that includes this car being a genuine weapon. A weapon, yes, but never intimidating. I suppose that really adds to the versatility of it. Well, as versatile as a two-seater sports car can be. Now, the fact that we're now on the road means the Artura is now available at McLaren Auckland, starting at $418,000. So for me, the Artura being completely new, is sort of hard to define where it fits in that pecking order. I'd say it's below the 765 just in terms of pure performance. The upside of that, for me, it means it's less daunting on the track, but still plenty of fun. And as we've shown today, the most real road-ready McLaren yet, and not to mention the most socially responsible, all thanks to those electrics. Which for now makes it part of a very exclusive McLaren club, the hybrids, alongside the P1 and the Speedtail.